Hi, I'm Molly Turco, structural geology expert with Applied Stratigraphics, and we have an upcoming course in the structural styles of extension, contraction, strike slip, and inversion, and I'll even throw in some salt tectonics there. In order to give you a taste of the upcoming course, I wanted to tell you a story. Well, this story contains a little bit of fiction and a little bit of nonfiction. But before I do, I want to preface it by saying that I'm a big fan of structural models. Now, I know that nature is sometimes more complex than just a simple structural model, but they are helpful. And in this course, I will show you how you can use structural models to validate an interpretation. So now, let's get started on that story. So this is a story about a guy named Bob. Bob is a geophysicist for a company that likes to explore for subthrust plays. In other words, they're looking for the fault trap. So Bob receives this seismic line and right away he's able to find their reservoir and map that. He's also mapped another horizon along with the basement. So after mapping his horizons, he studies the seismic lines and decides, I'd like to draw my fault about right here. After all, that kind of matches with what I'm seeing in the seismic data. So once he's got his fault mapped, he go ahead and he finishes out his horizons that he's mapped, and then he's able to figure out exactly where the prospect is located. So he runs this by management, and management is happy about the prospect. They decide to rig up and drill. Bob's pretty excited about this as well. He's pretty confident in his work and he knows that once they hit oil, he's gonna get a big paycheck. So what did happen when they drilled this well? Uh-oh, dry hole. That's never a good sign, right? Why was this a dry hole, Bob? Well, let's take a look and see where he went wrong. First off, if I was Bob, I would have probably drawn my fault differently because by looking at this, I know that it's not gonna work. So what are our options for drawing faults? Well, maybe we could draw a fault to where we meet this upper these upper horizons, or maybe we could draw our fault contact to where we meet the lower horizons. Hmm, maybe we could draw something a bit more shallow, kind of meeting in the middle. Or there's also the option to draw a fault that's a lot more steep and just meet those horizons where they're at. Well, if I was Bob, I would have probably started this prospect by looking at some structural geology models. So let's take a look at those models. I know that in this prospect that I am dealing with thick skin deformation and I'm dealing with thrust faulting. So I would go to my options for those models, and the one that I would land on is the model for thick skin fault propagation. And this model comprises of different elements. There are a few different ones to pick, but let's just start with the most simple model and break it down. That will be this one right up here. So let's study this fault model a little bit more. I see that I have a basement fault, and as that fault is being thrust upward, that is holding the sedimentary units above here. Now what I see is that as the sedimentary units are being folded, I get the development of two fold hinges. The first being a lower one, and the other one being an upper one. Now as that upper fold hinge is being projected downward, that will help me to identify the fault tip. So since that is the fault tip, that means that everything above here is not faulted, but that's actually going to be folded. And we call that area a triangular deformation zone. So what does this mean for our subthrust trap? Well, if we are going to map a horizon, the only place where we're going to get that foot wall trap is going to be located down here where this horizon hits that fault tip. Okay. So let's see how this model compares to our prospect. So now we are looking at our prospect alongside our structure model. So the first thing I wanna do is identify these two fold hinges. So if I start to study 
the the way this is folding up here, I might draw draw a fold hinge somewhere in here where I see that these beds are starting to roll over. And that might look something like this. Now in order to determine the lower fold hinge, I'm gonna try to figure out where that might be. And I see that I'm starting to lose some of my reflectors in here. And whenever your beds begin to dip too steep, you can lose your seismic resolution. So I believe that's what's happening here. And what we can do through here is draw another fold hinge. So now that I have my two fold hinge developed, I can go ahead and start to fill in the horizons that I wasn't able to see from the data itself. So once I've done that, I've projected this basement horizon to this upper fold hinge. And by doing that, I've identified my fault tip. Since I've projected my basement horizon onto this lower fold hinge, by connecting the fault from this fault tip to that point there, I now can get a pretty good idea of the orientation of my fault. And once I do that, I can just continue that on down through there. So now I have a pretty good model of my prospect compared to my structural model. So now let's figure out what we need to do next. Once you have this model drawn, the next thing you're going to want to do is start to figure out how to draw your horizons within this, this triangular deformation zone. So the way I've drawn them here is I've pretty much projected my reservoir horizon almost to about that fold hinge and then turned that up and connected it to this second fold hinge through there. Did the same thing with this lower horizon through here as well. So once we've done that, we can now go back and identify where our true subthrust trap would actually be. So where do we have our true footwall trap where this fault is going to trap your hydrocarbons? And that is also with the assumption that this is a ceiling fault. Well, that location would be somewhere right about in here. So, okay, we've already drilled a well. It was a dry hole. Let's just drill deeper, right? So if I take that well that I showed you in one of those earlier slides and I just copy and paste it onto here, this is where it would sit. Uh-oh, I think even if we drilled deeper, you still would not quite hit that trap. You might end up in your water leg or maybe just get an oil show. So this is the story about Bob is the non is the fiction part, but this was actually drilled this prospect was actually drilled this is the east grass creek field located in the bighorn basin and when they actually drilled this well they did not encounter a fault instead they encountered steeply dipping beds which are represented here by the dip meter data so hopefully next time bob decides to drill a prospect he'll use a structural model to help him with his fault interpretations so before I leave you today, I just want to make sure I give credit where credit is due. Everything I showed you today came from this paper called Foreland Basement Involved Structures, written by Shank Armitra and Van Mount. Shank Armitra was actually my advisor when I was getting my PhD. And if you're interested in this course, please visit stratigraphyhelp.com, where we have this course to offer as well as many others. I am a really big fan of using lots of seismic data and lots of exercises in my course, so I hope you will reach out and sign up, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you.